Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. We have a quick project today and that is going to be an unlined apron. It'll just be like a market apron. We'll have a pocket in the front, a shoulder strap and our waist strap. Just a very, very simple project. So made from a square of fabric, I'll show you how to shape the armhole section and put everything together. Okay, here's everything that we're going to be using for this apron. Because I'm going to be using a one inch wide strap for the waist and around the neck we're going to be using one inch sliders so we need one slider and you need one rectangular ring or if you don't have the rectangular rings you can use a d-ring instead uh, so either way you're going to need a slider and one of these rings we have a pocket piece that is 12 inches wide by seven inches now with my denim i'm going to be using this really bright green for my waist straps, my neck strap and my pocket binding as well as the tab. We need three pieces that are 21 inches by one inch wide. For the top of the pocket I'm going to put this binding just as a contrast so that you can see where the pocket actually is. That's also 12 inches by one inch. Then we need a little tab which is four inches by one inch and for the main piece of the apron we're going with 28 inches by 28 inches. I'm using a denim fabric here. I'm not going to be lining this one. It's just going to be a single piece of fabric using the denim or a nice heavier weight canvas or some, something that's got a really nice weight to it. Let's get started. I'm going to start with the pocket first. What I want to do here is take this 12 inch strip and you can use ribbon or bias binding. It really doesn't matter because I'm using this for the waist straps. I'm also going to use it on my pocket. I'm going to fold that in half lengthwise and then I will clip that onto the long edge of the pocket piece. When I fold this green piece of tape in half, rather than folding the edges up to meet each other perfectly, I'm going to fold this edge up to just sit at that line and that will give me the width of about two threads of the tape sitting on the other side. By doing that, when I go and top stitch this onto the front pocket, because I'm going to stitch from the shorter side, this will make sure that I actually stitch through all of the layers and I don't skip any sections. So the longer side will actually go to the back of the fabric. Because I know that the tape underneath is sitting further than the edge of this, I can sew really close to the very edge here. You can barely even see the stitching line, which is right on the very edge of the top here. And if you look over the other side, I've used a blue thread and there's plenty of room for the fabric underneath to be caught in that stitching line. Trim off the excess now, and then we're going to fold this over by one centimeter or three eighths of an inch. We'll do that all the way around the three edges. When this pocket is attached to the apron, I'm going to do two rows of stitching as just as a decorative effect on the outside. And that's why I don't need to worry about double folding the edge here because having the two rows of stitching this raw edge here is never going to be seen or messed up when you've got that extra row of stitching. You can on the bottom corners of your pocket just round them and then do a nice seam going around. I'm not going to bother I'm just going to have square corners. The pocket piece is ready to be applied to the apron now. Take your apron piece, and at the moment we just have a square of fabric. If you've got a pattern, then have your pattern facing you. So this is the bottom of the apron, and this will be the top. From the bottom of the apron, mark seven and a half inches, and we'll also fold this in half and find the center. That's my seven and a half inch line from the bottom. This is my center line. We'll take the pocket piece now and place that directly over the top of that line and find the center of that and just place the center of your pocket over the center here. Slide that down. I'm just going to cover the line so that nobody sees it. I'll pin this in place and then I'm going to take it to the machine. I'm going to stitch 
down the two short edges and along the bottom and I'm going to do two rows of stitching like what you see on denim pockets on the back of your jeans. I'm also going to put a row of stitching just down the center there and that will give you two pocket openings. So let's go back to the machine and we'll sew this pocket down. Starting at the top edge there I'm going to go forward back and forward again. There's a lot of stress on the corners of your pockets also at the top where the uh, where I'm going to do that center row of stitching I'll triple stitch that. These are areas that are always going to be pulled apart and will end up putting a hole in your fabric or the stitching will come apart. So I'm going to reinforce that on both rows of stitching also on that center row of stitching. From that little point there at the top I'm going to come down on the diagonal and then I'll do that second row of stitching and that second row of stitching is just going to be straight over the top of that hem that I did earlier. When I get to the bottom edge of the green I'm just going to do that diagonal stitch and meet up to where I started. There's the pocket now securely attached to the apron. You can have a look on the back and you can see the two rows of stitching that I've got going all the way around the pocket and down the center I've double stitched that. I had recently had to do an alterations repair on somebody's apron and I found that one whole half of her pocket had come apart. That was because it wasn't securely stitched on the side and they'd only done one row of stitching in the center. So I do recommend doing two rows of stitching and double row of stitching in the center. Turn your apron piece to the side. This is the top section here with your pocket entry and we're going to make a mark on the side eight inches from the top and on the top we're going to make another mark at seven and a half inches. So with our eight inch measurement here and our seven and a half inch measurement at the top we can take our apron, fold this in half, line up the corners and what we want to do from here to here is make a curve. So you can do that freehand if you're capable and you can see that I'm not. From the side edge come in two and a half inches, we're going to be coming straight across and then we're going to curve up to this seven and a half inch line. I'm not very good at drawing these curves so I find it easier to come out just a little bit. If you have a French curve that'll help you. Mine's just a little bit short. So we have a pretty ugly curve here but I'm going to make it look better in a minute. We can just go and cut this out along here. So that looks a little bit better now doesn't it? What we want to do now is hem all the way around the top, the armhole, the sides and the bottom. If you have bias binding and you prefer to bind the edges of your entire apron you can go ahead and do that at this point as well. I'm going to fold the armhole edge in just a quarter of an inch. I only want to do a very narrow fold here because of the curve it's going to make it difficult for this to sit nice and flat. If you have an overlocker or a serger you can also go and neaten up the raw edges but I'm doing a double fold here so I don't need to and then I'll fold that again. So what I'm going to want is a double folded edge all the way around the entire apron. When you're on the curve it's going to be very difficult to make, the, make this sit nice and flat. So open that out and I'm just going to clip the curves up to that first hemline. It'll help relax the fabric on the curves. It'll help the fabric sit much flatter. And now I'll go back and I'm going to fold that over and then I'll fold that over again. Once you've sewn this and pressed it, it'll sit nice and flat. And we'll repeat that for the other curve. With the underarm section done, I'm going to now work on the top section where the uh, neck strap is going to be. So once again, I'm going to fold the edge under. With the top edge folded under, I've only done that a quarter of an inch. The next fold I'm going to do is a half inch. 
The reason why I'm allowing a half inch is because the neck ties are going to be attached here and I want to be able to have a good secure spot to double stitch or triple stitch my ties. So my tie will sit on here and I'll have the other side with the buckle over here. Take your tie and we don't need to finish off the raw edge. Open this out again. So this is the half inch fold of the top of my apron. I'm going to place this tie just on the top of that and I'm going to come in about an inch from the edge. I'll fold the fabric over and the tie can sit like that. We can take the short tab, place the ring over the top of that and we're going to do the same at this side. So I'll place this about an inch from the outside edge just above the fold there. So I've got a tab here and my tie here. Clip the rest of it in place. Then what you want to do is take this section with the tab, fold it up and over. And I've just popped a pin in place there. So what will happen is that you'll have that tab sitting nicely underneath the top edge of your fabric. No raw edges uh, shown. And you'll do the same thing here. We've just got the one layer of tape. Fold that up and we can pin that in place as well. When we go and stitch this, we're going to do two rows of stitching, just like we did on the pocket. We'll be doing that all the way around the entire apron. When you come to the side, we'll do the same thing that we did on the top, fold it over once, and it just needs to be folded over a quarter of an inch. And then I've folded the next row over half an inch, just like I've done at the top. Take one of your side tabs and we're going to place that in the same way. So I'll put that directly over the fold there, right next to that fold line. And I'm going to place this closer to the top of the edge of the apron. So just it'll just sit underneath that double hem there. So just fold the fabric up and tuck in the edge of your apron string. Fold that back and then you can just clip the rest of it in place and we can sew all the way down for that too. We're going to repeat this for the other side of the apron as well. When you get to the bottom, before you secure this bottom corner, open it out and just do your quarter of an inch hem, then fold the quarter inch hem from the side seam back over and then fold over the half inch. This will help get rid of those raw edges on the corner of the apron. So continue along with your quarter of an inch all the way and once you've done that, then you can fold this up a half inch and you've got your double fold and you've done away with any raw edges. So I'll continue that all the way around. Okay, now that we have all the edges turned over and the ties attached, we're going to take this to the machine and stitch all the way around. And just like with the pocket I've done where I've done two rows of stitching, I'm going to do two rows of stitching on the outside edges as well. You can really start anywhere you like. I'm going to start just under the armhole edge here where the waist tab is, just because it's a little bit bulky and there are a lot of clips in my way. I'll start by securing that edge first and then I'll come up and do the curves, follow all the way around. When I'm at the shoulder strap, I'm going to go back and then forward again. And now that I've come back to the beginning, I've only stitched over this tab the once. I'm just going to go over that one more time. And I want to do a double stitch all the way around. So rather than ending my thread, I'm just going to sew up to the corner on the diagonal and turn my work around and continue on with my next row of top stitching. So I've done one row right on the very edge here and now I'm going to do one on the outer edge. And this just means I don't have to go and tie off any threads. Just I can just sew up to the corner and keep going. Thank you. 
On the ties, I'm going to go forward, back and forward again. I do this because I don't want to have to go and do any boxed corners. It's For me, it's a waste of time. It's easier, quicker, just to go forward, back and forward. I've done it in two sections. It'll never come apart. And I'm back to the beginning again. And we're completely finished. Okay, so I may have told a little bit of a lie. We're not completely finished just yet. We still have to put a slide on for the next strap to make that adjustable. The slider would have been easier to put on if we had have put it on first before we did this section here. Doesn't matter. It's simple enough to put on here as well. Take your tape, feed that underneath your slider and over the slide section. Make sure you've got this nice and flat. And then we're going to go to this side and place this from the top, go through to the back. I turn this around again and we're going to loop this raw edge up underneath that slide section, that center section. So what you can do here is just move the tab out of the way and just give yourself a little bit of room. It'll help you get in there. Slide the raw edge under there and then pop it back up through again. You might just want to slow down this part of the video. Uh, and then that raw edge can be secured in place along here. Take the tape out of the way, give yourself plenty of room and we'll take this to the machine and sew this down. Because this is a nice thin tape, I'm actually going to fold that under just to get any rid of any raw edges. I'll quickly go and sew that in place. Then I'll come back and show you how that looks. There's a slider in place. I've stitched that closed just underneath here. So that's going to work perfectly now so that you can adjust it around the neck. And on the waist ties, I've just folded this under twice and sewn straight across. If you've got a synthetic fiber, then you can actually just go and melt the edges with a match or a flame. And we are now completely finished. Okay, here's the finished apron on our mannequin, all dressed up with nowhere to go. So I like the addition of the green contrast on the pocket there. It just helps break up the blandness of the denim fabric. And then we have the uh, green shoulder straps as well. Now that I've made it, I think the shoulder strap should actually be a little bit longer. So I will alter the dimensions at the beginning of the video where I've put all the sizes. I'll add another four inches to the length of the strap because we do want that to be fully adjustable along here. So here it is along the back. Just tied up at the back there. And again, if you want to, you can make this strap a little bit longer as well. I'll just add four inches to the length of each of these three straps at the beginning of the video where I've got all the measurements. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.